the church that Jesus Christ is building. There are a couple of things that when you look at what God has done, he has made it very clear and loud when he says, I'll build my church. If you open your Bibles in the book of Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13 to 20, there's something there that is unique. I've always wondered and asked myself lots of questions. Some of the questions that I've asked is that, why did Jesus in particular decide to ask questions to his disciples? Asking, him, asking them questions when he has been spending lots of time with them. Where he goes, he, he looks at the disciples and said, well, I sure truly want to know who do people say I am. Now, if you have been moving with a person for a long time, or you have known the person for a long time from nowhere, this person asks a question, who do you think I am? Is it not going to amaze you or confuse you? Is it not going to bring you into the position of, where is he coming from? What is happening? What does he want? Why all of a sudden he chose to ask these questions? And Jesus is asking those questions concerning his identity. He's trying to find out if these people, they literally knew who he was. He is trying to figure out, do you really know me yet I'm in your midst? Do you have a relationship with me? Who do you think I am? What have I done? What are you going to remember about me when I'm gone? And then the disciples, yet they are with Jesus for the longest, they don't seem to understand what is taking place. The disciples, they begin to go ahead and say all kinds of things, different kinds of questions, the disciples begin, some of them begin to answer questions that were irrelevant. Then Jesus changed and says, but I really want to know, what about yourself? Who do you think I am? Let's read the Bible together so that you understand where I'm coming from. From Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 20. When Jesus came to the region, to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? Just alone there was enough to clarify and qualify Jesus who he was. That's why sometimes when people they are talking, we don't listen to the end of the discussion, we listen to the beginning. Because sometimes we are not paying attention of what is going on. Jesus is asking, who do people say the son of man is? He's talking about himself. They replied, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. And still others say Jeremiah. And some they say one of the prophets. So Jesus realizes this is so mixed up. Then he asked another question, but what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? He's asking a question, but what about you? What's going on? Who do you think I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by the flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of Hades, or hell, will not overcome it. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosened in heaven. Now, I'm enjoying that part. Because Jesus now is clarifying something that is unique binding and loosing he's trying to make us understand who we are as the children of God then Jesus ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was 
the Messiah. He ordered everybody not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Let's pray. Precious Savior, I pray that today as we receive this message at the end of the year, you will reveal yourself and you will have the relationship to understand who you are and how we can handle issues that comes to our, affect us in our day-to-day -day life. And that our God will be able to be victorious in all the things that we do. Father, have thy own way today. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus. Give us the revelation like the revelation that you give to Peter. Give us that revelation that will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Here's a question. He asked, who others thought he was? Why is he asking who others thought he, who he was? Then he asked who they thought he was. The, these are two things that I want you to see. The first thing that Jesus is asking is who others they think he is. Who are others? Those that are outside. Have you ever realized that the people they are asking the same question when they see you coming to church? Who are you real as a child of God? What do you know about your God? What's your relationship with that God? How deep is your relationship? He is asking who others they thought he was. At that moment, because people who see you, they are the one who are going to be able to testify who you are. Anything that you testify about yourself is self-praise and self-glory. But anything others they say about you, that's the real you. Because that's the you that you don't know, and then people they know. That's the you that people they understand without you comprehending who you are. Then the second thing that he did, he said, but yourselves, who do you think I am? He's asking them now, you, who do you think I am? Who did you think I am? And Peter, in his response, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And what does Jesus say? Stating his confession of faith, Jesus looks upon Peter. He says, uh, this has not been revealed to you by flesh. No man has revealed this to you who have revealed this is God. Now there are some of the things that in 2018 where we are going, man cannot reveal things to you. And you do need to seek the face of God. And when you begin to seek the face of God, you are going to see the manifestation of who God is. And the God is going to begin to reveal things and when he revealed those things, you'll be able to comprehend and say, this man didn't say nothing to me, but God has revealed this. And the things that God reveals, those are the things that have long-lasting effect of positiveness in your life. When man reveals something, there's a lot of ifs and buts. But when God reveals something, it's done, there's peace, there's breakthrough, you know for sure that God is up to something. Jesus then used this opportunity to speak of his church. That brings me to the point of realizing that when Jesus was asking them, there was gathering but there was no church. And what people they are looking at right now, they are not only looking for the gathering, they are looking for the God that is found in the church. The reason why sometimes the church, we are busy looking for so many people to come. We are not busy to look for the revelation that God has. And in 2018, I'm not going to be seeking how many people you can bring. In 2018, that's why our theme is the disciples that change the world. I'm going to be seeking how much you know your God. Amen. If you know your God... There's nothing that you can fail to do on his behalf. If you don't know your God, everything is going to be impossible. If you know your God, 
you're going to see the greatest victory. And those people that see you, they want the God that is inside you. There's a difference on trying to tell the people about God whom you don't know. You see, what is happening, most of us, we go and invite people to church, and when they come, they don't stay because we don't have that God ourselves. Are we together? When they come, they have no way to connect because the person who invited them, he's not connected to that God. But when you're connected to that God, they will be chasing after your God. And as they are chasing after your God, then they would want to have what you have. This is what the disciples did. They had to have that big God in themselves. They had to have the God of miracles. They have to have the God of signs and wonders. They have to have the God who is the rock. And when they had that God, things begin to change. And Jesus was asking them because he was about to reveal that he was not only there as a human being, he was a God. Now the fact that he was a God, Jesus is about to bring a revelation to them that is going to profoundly change their lives. And as he changes their life, these people, they are not going to be in the same way how they used to be because now they have found they are the church. That's why the church says, I want to say this is not this building, the church is you. Amen. And Jesus now is not trying to build the buildings that are made by men. Jesus is trying to build the church that is made by God. And that church that is made by God, Jesus is trying to reveal to us that I'm about to reveal something. When people, they see you, they'll follow this church that I have built, not the church that is built by men. Now when God is revealing that church, you begin to see things that begin to happen. How many believe when God is building the church, there is no shortage of signs and wonders? <laughs> Hallelujah. We are going to see things happening. Why are we going to see them? Because God is building the church. Let's go here. Let me show you something. Jesus, he promised to build his what? His church. Upon the what? Upon the revelation. There's a revelation here that Jesus has promised. He mentioned the foundation upon which he would build the church. It was not going to be out of man's made foundation. He described the ultimate victory of his church. So do you realize why we don't have victory? It's because we are church built by man, not by God. Or are we together? Because the church that is built by God, there's no way how the devil can defeat it. Because the devil is defeated by God. Now I want to see you and the see God building you, illuminating your mind, and bringing the insight for you to see the things that no man can see but God. And I want to see you at the point whereby you begin to realize I am built on the sure foundation. All right? Now, he described the ultimate victory of his church. He spoke of great authority that would be given. All right? This church is going to have what? Great authority. Now, here's the problem. We as the children of God, do we have the authority? If we have the authority, do we use the authority? Do we doubt on the authority that we have from God? These are the questions that we should be asking ourselves. Do I have the authority? Am I saved? Am I washed by the blood of Jesus? Am I sanctified? Do I have the authority? Can I stop the storm? Can I say to the disease, bow in the name of Jesus? Jesus is asking us here, I'm building the church and that church I'll give the authority. Now he's giving us the power to bind and loose. Alright? Now if he's giving us the power to bind and loose, how many things have you bound and have been bound? If he's giving us the power to loose, how many things have you loosened and have been loosened? So you begin to think to say, there is something inside me 
is either I'm doubting the God who built the church. Because if God is the one who built you, then something begins to happen inside you. Why am I praying and my prayers are not answered? Why am I not seeing the results? Why when I bound, things are not bound? Why when I loosen, things are not loosened? Which power have I been given? What revelation did God reveal to me? So God is revealing these things to give you the authority. The church that God is going to be building, as I've been seeking God for 2018, God revealed to me that there is going to be a phenomenal move because the church is not going to be just the flamboyant name outside Home City Church or the church that is built on the hill. The church that is inside you, when people they see you, they want the God that is inside you. Are we together? When people they see you, they will have no other excuse. They will look at you and they say, there is something that I don't have that somebody has. And when they, that thing that is inside, they will say, if I only can have what is inside that man. And that is the thing that is going to transform them. When they look at you, they say, something changed me by looking at that man or that woman, his walk, his talk, his belief, what he does. And all of a sudden, when he says something, you better be careful. If he blesses you, you are blessed. If he kisses you, you are kissed. Why? Because this person is built on the shoe foundation of God are we together so now if you get these facts that I'm sharing with you something is going to begin to happen in your life because when people they'll be looking at you they'll say wow you will not invite people to go to church people they'll follow you because they have been seeing your vehicle running around and whenever they see something jumps inside them Amen. You not need to wonder. And when you tell the person who you are, they'll say, we knew about it. Why? Because you are built on the sure, sure foundation. Here are some of the things that we see here. What is this church Jesus promised to build? What is this church? What is the foundation upon which it would be built? Huh? How would the gates of hell not prevail against it? Because Jesus, he is involved and he's, we, we begin to think, this is the way how my mind thinks all the time. If you ask my wife, she'll tell you, says, David, when you're talking with him, he will ask you a lot of questions, especially, you know, if I'm doing something and I just want to find the facts. I've been like that. All my life, I, I always want to know where I'm going, what I'm doing, where I'm heading, what is happening here. That is just the way how God created me. Now, when I'm preaching, I also bring this for you to understand. And I pray that you understand because if you understand this the way I'm saying, you will see the greatest victory that you have never realized in your life. Ask yourself these questions. What is this church Jesus promised to build? Is it Peter? Peter is dead. Now if Peter, you know the Catholic, the Roman Catholic, they talk about Peter. But Peter is dead. But Jesus didn't die. Who built this church? And what is the foundation upon which it would be built? And you begin to look. I didn't see Jesus dig in on any foundation here. I didn't see it. So you begin to look. Where did Jesus dig? Jesus dug in my heart. Then what authority was given to Jesus and to whom he believed? You see? So we begin to see these things. We begin to see our lives transforming and changing, coming to a level whereby you say, I'm different to everybody. Amen? I'm different to people around me. And what makes me different is who I have and who built me. Amen? Amen? You are created by God, but God gave different insights. That's why Jesus, when he was asking the disciples, some said, you are Jeremiah. Some said, you are John the Baptist. Some answered different questions. But now here come, 
here comes the truth one. He says, no. Simon, who do you say? I am. And then Simon began to reveal. Now, <laughs> you know, I always wonder to find out what people do. Duncan Campbell once said, the kingdom of God is not going to be advanced by our churches becoming filled with men. The kingdom of God is not going to be advanced by our churches filled with men in our churches, but by men becoming filled with God. Are we together? The kingdom of God is going to be advanced by our churches filled with men. I'm telling you, I have pastored, Ruth and I, we've been pastoring together, you know, for many, many years. I was a pastor before I married my wife, and, uh, you know, we've been pastor. I've been pastoring for 35 years. Me and Ruth, we've been pastoring together for 32 years. But I'm telling you, I have seen people coming to the house of God looking sanctimonious and holy. They were nowhere near to God. You go into some of these churches, you think of what some people they do. You even say, do these people even come to the house of God? Do they sit and listen? And every Sunday they are in the, in the church. It's because they are not built on the true foundation of the word of God. Okay, here we go now. I want to see what God is preparing. A.B. Simpson said these words, God is preparing his heroes. God is preparing his what? Heroes. And when the opportunity comes, he can fit them into their places. When the opportunity, like that opportunity that it came to Peter, when the opportunity comes, he can fit them into their places in a moment and the world will wonder where they come from. <laughs> Have you ever thought that? The world will wonder. I always pray, I said, God, make the world wonder to say, where was this one before? What made him to be what he is? You must take a step of radical faith that will change you. Don't go in 2018 with the same mindset that you had in 2017. Otherwise, you'll be defeated. Now, Jesus here began to describe the church he was building. As he defines, he says that church, it, from the Greek word, is known as ecclesia, meaning an assembly of the congregation. So now, he's building the church that is going to be composed of Jesus all over. Everyone in there, he's built by Jesus. Now you can imagine Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What happens? It's fire, it sparks the world into a different atmosphere. People, they are no longer the same. And it is used in the Bible most often in two senses. The church as the body of Christ. That means you and I, there is nothing that is different. That is only different is that some they are tall, some they are short, that some they are big, some they are small, just personalities. But when we come to one formula or one denominator that brings us is that we have Jesus. So if we have Jesus, that means the people now outside, ask yourself a question. When people they see me, when I'm driving, when I'm walking in the mall, when I'm at my working place, do they see me as I am by my name or they see someone else inside me? Do they look, when they look at me and they begin to ask a question, man, even when I look at that guy, there is something that has happened. Somebody said to me this week, he says, whenever I speak to you, and I didn't realize this. He says, whenever I speak to you, or whenever I see you, I don't stop shaking. I said, what do you mean? He says, there is just something about you. And I don't know something about me that causes this person to shake. There's only one thing that I know, is that the Jesus that is inside me, there is that revelatory power that he hits this person and this person comes to a point whereby he is shaking. Now what am I saying? You know, you shall know the truth and the truth will do what? Set you free. When you begin to know the truth, your life begins to change. 
Because inside you, God has revealed who he is. The ultimate revelation of who God is, is what completely changes us and is what people they see. Do you understand why most of the people they say, I have spent the whole year and I never won a single soul. The reason why you never won a single soul is because people, they were seeing you and you alone. They never saw another person inside you. I don't think you heard me. The reason why people, they are not transformed when they are around you is because they see you and they see you alone and they don't see another person inside you. If they are going to see another person who saves us, is, if Jesus was to walk in here, we all bow down and they begin to worship him. We all surrender and submit, greater is he that is in us. Now, when people that don't see Jesus, there is nothing that challenges them. When they begin to see another person, when, like someone said to me, says, when you are praying, if you are praying alone, there is another person. That is praying with you. And that his name is Jesus. If you are two, there's another third person. If you are four, there's another person. And he said, look, you don't understand what I'm saying. When the Hebrew boys were thrown into the lake of fire, there was the th fourth man. And that man was Jesus. When Daniel was thrown into the den of lions, there was another man who shut the mouth of the lion. Who is that one? Who, can, who is able to have the authority to cause the things of this world to be shut? Is Jesus. Even the lion's jaws, they rock. Now, what am I saying here? Jesus is building the church. The church that is building is not geographical area where we worship all the local congregation. The church that he is building is the church that is going to turn us upside down. The church whereby we have the presence of God. The church whereby you are walking and someone asks you, says, please, I don't know who you are. Would you pray for me? I don't know what is happening. Will you pray for me? You know, in 2005, before, no, 2010, before we came over here to New York, my boys and I, we were going to Nashville, Tennessee. It was Emmanuel and Elijah. We had gone there because there are some few things that we are doing to the place where we used to live before we relocated to Nashville. And we stopped somewhere in Dalton, Georgia, which is the carpet factor of the world. And when we stopped there, we were putting gas. And this woman drove to where we were and they said, sir, sir, don't jump in the car. It scared my children because they didn't understand what was going on. Then I said, yes, ma'am, how can I help you? He says, I need prayer right now. I said, do you know me? He says, I don't care who you are, but God revealed to me that I need prayer. And then my children, they stood and they looked. And Elijah says, Dad, don't waste any minute. Let's pray for this lady. We began to pray and that woman started crying. And she looked at us and says, how much do I pay? I said, we don't need your pay. We just need to pray for you. And at that moment, the Lord revealed to me what was going on through that woman. The Lord began, and that woman at the end says, God told, I came driving as fast as I could, breaking every speed limit, crossing every traffic light, because God told me, the man that I have appointed to pray for you now is at the gas station. Now, I want to let you know, when God's anointing and the spirit is inside you, things that he's going to do through you, they will amaze you. I never saw that woman again. I didn't ask her what was her name. But the one thing that I knew, I prayed for her. And when I was praying for that woman, I felt my whole entire body. And I remember talking with Elijah and Emmanuel. Was that an angel? Who was that? What was happening? You know, who is that one? Who just came from out of the bruise from nowhere driving he drove and when this lady was coming I thought he was going to run into my car because I think she was coming at the fast speed that I've never seen a person that is going to the gas station going to and when she 
I applied the brakes. I wanted to say, whoo, you scared me. I had no chance because she came running and said, sir, now pray for me. So, so what does that mean? So it's because I was equipped, I was endued with the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus, who is the author of the church, is a resident and a living inside me. So Jesus, at this moment, he chooses, he said, look, I'm going to do things that will amaze you. How many will be looking forward in 2018? You are just so amazed that you are standing at a place, maybe you are standing outside, and someone come and is crying, I need your prayers. I need the power of God. Because people, they are tired of seeing church members. I don't want to see church members. I want to see Jesus members. When people they begin to see Jesus members, everything changes because Jesus who have built them begin to reveal who he is and then the people's lives are completely turned around. That's where we are going to see people that are saying, I'm bringing my family member who is on life oxygen from the hospital because the church is full of Jesus. You know, I'm tired of coming to the church. We are not seeing miracles and I believe this 2018 we are going to see the unusual the unexpected things that man has never dreamed or seen and the people when they come because we are full of Jesus this year one of the things that I want to put into your life is how to become a true disciple of Jesus Christ and then the world can see Jesus inside you not the world is seeing you as a member of Home City Church but when they see Jesus Home City Church will have no room to put the people because they will be following your Jesus that's the message that I plan to preach for the rest of the year. discipleship these disciples when Jesus died they were no longer lonely these disciples they were in a good place and one of the things that we see there, the church is characterized with a unique opportunity. Jesus here, he says, and the God placed all things under his feet. Under his what? His feet. That means everything that comes to us is placed under what? Come on, somebody. Everything that is coming to you is placed under what? Amen. Amen. Now, why don't we see things placed under our feet? What is under our feet? I can squeeze it and nobody will see it. Amen? Demons are under what? Diseases are under what? Lack of joy is under what? So anything that attacks us is under what? So today, take authority. I want you to hear this. This is the revelation. This is the I want you to begin to put the things that the enemy, the devil will not stop attacking you, but it's your identity that you have and your relationship and the connection with God that you'll be able to look at the devil and say, you are under my what? Are we together? You see, the enemy, he will do anything, especially when he knows the power and the glory that is inside you. He will do everything to try to demise you or to demote you or to look you weak and foolish and insignificant. But raise yourself, shake yourself up like what uh, Paul did when he was at the island of Malta when he reached over there when the boat had capsized in the river and they were all drowning and the Paul looked at them he says fell brethren we are going to land and he began to swim and when they reached over there the devil he didn't say these people they have survived they were about to be drowned the devil still sent a venomous 
poisonous snake that hang on Paul and even the barbarian that's what the Bible says even the barbarian they said even though this man have suffered to be set free from drowning in that ocean he's a devil because the snake is about to kill him but this is what Paul did he says the devil and the snake they are under my what the Bible says Paul he shook it off everybody shake it off he shook it off and when he shook it off he squeezed the people that is said this man he is defeated they realize that the devil is a liar amen they realize that the devil is a what he they realize and the poor at that moment he said these words he said I'm here for one thing and the one thing alone is to defeat the enemy he shook that devil and when he shook that devil, even those who thought you was a barbarian, even those who thought you was defeated, they said, this man, they changed, he's a God. Amen. When people, they think you are defeated, in a, in a, in a, in a spirit of a second, they'll turn around and they say, my God, this man here, we thought he was a devil. Now see, he is a God. That's the way how the world is. The world one day they are praising you. The world one day they want to crucify you. So don't be worried about what the world is doing. Just mind the God who is inside you. And the God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be the head over all, over everything for the church. Which is the body, the fullest of him who fills everything in every way. Who is that? God. So the church also is known as the household of God. And I'm going to speak about this then. I'll, I'll let for next week because I want people to understand who we are as the disciples of God. Amen. I'm, I'm going to let you go home. But I want you to understand. If I was to ask you a quiz to, on what I've been teaching today. So, so what did you understand? Would you raise your hand and say, oh, what I understood is that I should have Jesus inside me. Would you go back out there when the enemy comes to attack you? Because the devil is like a loading line. Look at, listen to me very careful. The devil is not a loading line. He's like a loading line. Amen? Let me tell you something. If a dog is locked in someone's house and is barking, does that dog scare you if it's in the fence? It's not a dangerous dog because it's not going to jump out of the fence. But if that dog jumps out of the fence, you better run for your life. You are going out. The devil is locked in God's fence. And whatever he will do, he's going to be loading from inside the rock. And what do we do sometimes? We cry when the devil he is in prison. You are not in prison, but the devil will show you. Have you ever seen people who can scare you? The news media. They can scare you by what they say. And if you listen to them, you will not get out of the house. Amen? That's why they call them fake media, right? They can tell you. They will tell you everything. And they will scare you. They'll, by the time when you get out of your place you are so nervous you just don't know what to do my good God you to think I, I remember one time I'm listening to the news I was about to go to pick my daughter from school and they are talking about how the more in Chituaga there is a bomb scare I said what the bomb nearby my home I'm, I'm thinking, what is happening? So there are terrorists around here. You begin to think all these things, and there's police, you hear the alarms going all over. I said, it's happening nearby my place. And all of a sudden, that news is all over the world, and people that say, where do you live? You live in Buffalo. What about this bomb that we're hearing? The news, the fake news has already taken it. Now that's the way how the devil is. He carries what? Fake news. He will tell you a lot of things and bring you to the level whereby you'll be so intimidated. And before you realize, you feel today is your last day. 
remember Jesus is the head of all things amen this is what he said in closing you can find it in first Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 if I'm delayed you know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's house which is the church of the living God the pillar and the foundation of the truth the pillar and the foundation of the what the truth so now God is revealing to us say saints never you walk in fear never you be dismayed nor discouraged that thing that comes to discourage you is nothing but a lie from the pit of hell never you be diminished here's something that I want to encourage you and this is something that I want each and everyone to know every level that you go in the Lord you meet the higher devils some of the attacks is not because you have opened the door to the devil some of the attacks that we go through as children of God is because you have gone into another level and sometimes we cry look the devil is all over me instead of praising God to say I'm on another level and I'm defeating this devil the way how I defeated him on the other side are we together well I, I, I know you are not listening to me <laughs> if you listen to me here the, you, you're missing a, an opportunity to unlock your blessings I said whenever you are on another level you are going to get a level of attack not because you have done something wrong it's just because you have walked in another territory remember every blessing comes with a different set of opposition yes. are you hearing what I'm saying every blessing comes with a set of opposition so if God is blessing you on a different level there is going to be a different set of opposition to try to hold you not to do what God wants to do through you that's the reason when the enemy is opposing you take that moment and start celebrating God some people that have been opposed to the point whereby their life was almost snatched out of them not because they sinned or did anything just because the devil is trying to prove that where you are you are not supposed to be there what am I saying whenever you meet a level of opposition start praising God saying I'm going higher this is not my limit I am, have no limitation this what is coming over me be cancer be any disease is just nothing but a lie from the pit of hell I'm going on another level God has planned and prepared a set place for me be victorious in Jesus name are we together hallelujah if I had the time I'll break it but next week I'm going to break it a little bit further for you to understand what God is looking in 2018 I wanted to bring you to a point whereby we're thinking how are we going to have the greatest victory at the home city church how am I going to have victory in my own household how am I going to have victory in my company how am I going to have victory among friends at my working place how am I going to have victory in my own household how isn't that the question the church that Jesus Christ is building if Jesus is building you Jesus if it's man building you stay in man but as for me and my household I choose to stay in Jesus Amen. you know Jesus is building you stay in Jesus and when Jesus is doing something there are some difficulties that you may ask yourself for real I can't continue to do this nobody seems to be appreciating me people that seem to be abusing and using me hey look here 
Nobody can abuse and misuse a child of God. Nobody can misuse the God that is inside you. Because the Bible says you are the apple of his eye. And the, the fact that you are the apple of his eye, if you can never let anybody touch your rectina, would you think God will let someone touch? So begin to rejoice and say, God, the victory that I have, I can never match to anything. So tonight, as you'll be watching and celebrating the coming of the new year, know who you are. Don't just know who you are. Celebrate the victory. God has given me this message because I realize there are people that God is going to be raising in this 2017. We are going to see greater phenomenal move. But if I just preach a message for you to feel good, it's defeating the purpose. I want you to be immune that when the devil comes and says, I can't touch this. Every part of your vein, your, every part of your vein, your cell, your fiber, your body is oozing Jesus. When people, they see you, they say, there's too much Jesus in here. Are you ready for 2018? I want everybody to stand. going to pray a prayer of declaration. I don't want you to look backwards. I don't want to look sideways. I want you to look forward. I don't want you to worry about the things that are trying to snoop around you. All the defeat, all the worries that the enemy has tried to bring nearby you. I want you to look at yourself and say God I'm created in your image and inside me I'm that church that Jesus you built and you promised the victory and the breakthrough in my life and I want you to walk in that this coming year 2017, 2018 we are going to see a lot of things because I know this is the year of the Lord give me 15 or 20 people that are full of Jesus will change Buffalo. Give me 100 people that are full of Jesus will change the whole world. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because people they are looking for your Jesus. You'll be amazed how people they'll be testifying and they say ever since they ran into you they are no longer the same. You may not say much, you may just say one word. You may just say, Jesus loves you. And it will haunt them for the rest of their lives. Why did that man say, Jesus loves me? I want each and every one of you to raise your hand. And say these words after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you for 2017. Thank you for 2017. I receive. I receive. I receive. My breakthrough. My breakthrough. For 2018. For 2018. I'm that church. That Jesus built. On the foundation. That can never be shaken. I'm so thankful. So that I have victory that I in you Jesus. Jesus I have breakthrough I'm more than a conqueror yeah. 2018, 2018 I'm on another level I'm on a devil. and the devil is underneath, underneath my, my feet in Jesus name the devil is underneath my feet in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah let's give Jesus a praise hallelujah 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 we are going to see signs and the wonders ligaments built prophecies come to pass miracles happening 
people set free. We are going to see things that we have never dreamt or imagined, but we have read about them. And the God will make you to be part of the process. You say, why is God using me? And you'll be asking yourself questions. Where did this come from? 2018. There are things that are coming that will change the world. I remember I preached a message one time, the look that changed the world. And God is, is about to give you that look that will change Buffalo. Amen. Today, as we finish, we are taking the pictures for the end of the year. Uh, the children, they will also come over here. We're taking the pictures for the end of the year. Uh, Sister Bridget is going to come and take pictures. Please uh, don't leave, hang around. We want to take pictures as a group. We want to take pictures as a family. We want to take pictures, you know, and we are going, we want the world to know who we are. We want to look back that at the end of 2017, we took pictures. And this is what happened. This is who we are. Amen. You give life. You, you are love.